Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about interviews. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Hi Frederick, I really miss the coding example videos. I know it's extra work. Uh, okay. Uh, anyway, w would like to know your opinion about interviews in Europe, where sometimes they seem to be asking for an entire IT department. I had a couple of experiences recently and they asked about DevOps, front-end security, node performance, a lot of very specific tools and not things you expect a senior dev to know but a person with but with five years of experience in that specific company to know. It was, It is so weird. I usually take that as a red flag, but it's more frequent practice every day. I prefer US companies because of the interviews. They usually ask you for general knowledge, maybe some fundamentals, and the algorithm and data structure, the structure typical stuff. Thanks again for everything. Spending time watching your videos is my little whim, is my little whim every day. Oh, thank you. I'm happy to provide whims uh, for for the masses. Uh, okay, and as for the coding example videos, it's really simple, guys. The reason why I haven't made them is because I have other stuff that I'm doing. Right now I'm working on a, well, it's been a long-running project now. It's a private project that I've uh, been building. It's going pretty well, I would say. Uh, which is uh, taking up all my free time, so I don't really have any more time to put into like making videos and stuff like that. Uh, so that's the reason why it's not that I don't have any more stuff that I could make. I have tons of stuff. I mean, uh, it's actually funny because these days uh, I don't know how I got to this point, but now I'm uh, well, an unofficial architect at like a gigantic super corporation type of thing, right? And so uh, I don't make videos as much, but I do make tutorials. I just make it for people at my company. That sort of thing, like showing off. Uh, show, well, showing off is a strong term, but showing sort of like experiences and how to work with different concepts. And it's usually at a little bit of a higher level. Uh, but uh, it's the same deal. So this channel is already paying back itself, or rather like the experience. And as for interviews and my thoughts on interviews in Europe versus the US, I can't really speak for for it. As the, the thing I can say is that the thing that you are saying indicates to me that you are an inexperienced software developer, uh, or like you're you're actually not that uh, solid in your skills. The reason why I say that is because or uh, well, rather you're weak in your overall knowledge. The reason why I say that is not because I'm trying to be mean, I'm trying to, I, I'm just latching on to the fact that you prefer algorithms and data structures and general fundamentals questions, which a computer science student would prefer because that is what you have been prepared to answer. And I don't know a single human being who doesn't feel that, oh, the thing that I'm already sort of good at, or the thing that I feel is relevant, and the thing that I've been prepared is, that's the thing that is, like, important. Because that's sort of how you, how most people work. If you're faced with a challenge that is outside of your comfort zone, or something that you feel uneasy about, or un insecure in, you very immediately start your mind, and a lot of people do this, um, myself sometimes included, you start rejecting it and you get angry and upset that you're being tested on something that you feel uncomfortable with and then you try to uh, to blame somebody for it or try to make it like, why are you asking me these stupid questions, these are irrelevant, you know, and so forth and so forth. And sometimes you're right, sometimes it is irrelevant, but in this case the thing that you are describing is actually extremely relevant. Now I don't know what specific tools are because I can't feel, I don't, I don't even know well, I can't imagine a company that would ask you about specific tools that are just used in that company. What my suspicion is, is that you got a wake-up call. I think that you applied to a... that I think that you label yourself as a senior software developer, and I suspect that you try to get a job in a company that actually is looking for an actual senior software developer. And I think that you don't know 
what an actual senior is. I think that you think you are you are one because you have been to be, been tricked into believing that you are better than you are, and I don't think that that is necessarily because you you are make like that you are how do I put this? This is where it gets tricky, guys. You have no idea how many so-called quote unquote seniors that I meet as part of my job, and it's my job to evaluate how good they are so that the company knows if we should pay them an absurd amount of money. Or if we should just make them an offer for a mid-level, like a standard salary, or if we shouldn't hire them whatsoever. And I meet people like this on an almost weekly basis, who they have the t title senior, and they, exp they, they, in some ca cases, they're like super arrogant and like super confident and so forth. And then you ask them a few basic questions about things that are extremely relevant for someone who's going depending on the role now, and they completely fail. Like completely fail. Like it's not even like they they and some of them try to pretend like they know, and some try to fake it, and some people are just annoyed and like there's tons of weird responses to this sort of thing and the thing that I like to say to people is that the hiring process is a very good indicator of how well does the company that you are applying to actually know what they need because if you have a bunch of general purpose algorithm and data structure questions that's a very lazy interviewing process and it probably has hurt that company more than once unless they are like literally training people and the sort of work that is being done by the people in there is like let's just say that I would not want to work in such a company because as I said the like, having a really lazy interviewing process means that you have a bunch of complete morons most likely I'm sorry to say working within the company and the code base and the overall process of the uh, company is very likely to reflect that because it is not possible to figure out if someone is a senior level developer or a mid-level or something like that by just asking some basic algorithm question and data structure typical questions the reason why you think that that is the way you do it is because that's how Google does it and people who don't understand why Google is asking that sort of, uh, the, why that is the popular way of doing it for things, for companies like that, is that they treat that as the only thing that matters. But what actually is the truth of the matter is that, yes, that does matter, depending on the role, but usually it matters. But the tooling and the surrounding ecosystem of services and practices is also extremely relevant, depending on the level. For a junior software developer, you can, you're fine with just asking some basic algorithm questions maybe or uh, if it's like a specific stack like the basic tools and so forth because what you're looking for is not someone who knows all the things you know someone you want to get someone who is good enough so that they can be trained to become really really productive so the passion in that scenario matters more but for a mid-level or like a senior level developer who you're sort of expecting to be productive fairly immediately this is extremely relevant it's extremely relevant but then you have the other extreme, and I've been in situations like that as well, where you have people, like in the hiring process, where, where they ask tons of completely irrelevant questions. They do not matter whatsoever. And that is usually an indicator of incompetence rather than be like laziness or ignorance or things like that. And incompetence uh, in this scenario means that they don't actually know how what what skills they need. So they sort of just put together a bunch of people who are not senior level developers or people who really know this stuff and they just sort of put a bunch of stuff together and they ask everything between you know between the earth and the sun, right? Because they, they basically they are so bad at this thing that they're trying to find a like a way to emotionally feel like yeah this person seems to be able to in a confident manner answer all our questions and that incidentally guys is the way that most like the half baked uh, so called seniors make it uh, into into the industry because they under they they start realizing that if you talk to a company like that. Uh, you see, you just have to know the tools and the words, and then speak with confidence, and they will believe it, that you are really good. You have no idea how many interviews I've done with seniors like that, and I have eaten them alive. Some of them have actually got angry with me for just asking them a question that I know for a fact that even a junior would be able to pass, but they can't answer it because they have 
uh, actually spent most of their career do like they they're they're actually not that good. It's just that they can't face the fact that they're they're not that good because you know they are so used to being able to get by on the fact that they have some knowledge, some skill, and then the rest is confidence and incompetent stakeholders. So what I want you to take away from this is that uh, my thoughts on the interviewing processes and like so forth is that uh, it is the relevancy of the questions that determine how well a company knows IT and that is what I keep telling people. Uh, guys, the interviewing process is bad because the companies usually don't know how to hire software developers. If they ask very general simple algorithm questions it's usually a very lazy process because and they simply don't know any better. They have no real understanding, or if you're really lucky, they they only ask those sort of questions because they have really talented people who train you for everything. And I've never seen that happen, uh, so I can't really say if it does happen. The companies who ask a lot of very specific questions or a lot of like as I call them irrelevant questions, who are trying, they're basically it almost feels like they're trying to fail you. Are usually the companies who are incompetent, like they don't actually know how to hire people, and sometimes you are unfortunate, and they have like seniors or like so-called senior or mid-level developers who can't handle the power of saying whether or not somebody should have a job or not, and so they like let their ego or like their I don't know, get in the way. And so they try to like get really on your case because as I said, they, they're emotionally mature. The best interviewing process is one where you have someone who really knows the job and a, ideally a senior software developer with a bit of experience who knows how to figure out what skills do we need and do the can, does the candidate actually have those sorts of skills? Candidates who are usually afraid or like non-solid junior levels or people who are who believe that they are better than they are are usually the sort of people who act like this. Uh, you don't actually understand what it means to be a true software professional and so of course you're going to feel more comfortable if people just ask you the simple stuff that you have learned uh, because that means that you don't have to grow as a person. Have a great day.